Today we're going to be installing an X-Travel kit on a Turbo R. This is the same kit that fits on a Pro R, also works on the four seat cars as well. So first we're going to go ahead and get started, pull the wheels and all the suspension off and uh, get ready to install it. So we just finished taking everything off that was factory on the car. Um, we pulled off all the arms. The only thing that was a little bit tricky is there's some 3 16 rivets going into the upper arm. In order to do that, we took a 3 16 drill bit and we just spent our time drilling them out. The rivets will kind of spin, so if you just pull up on the line a little bit as you're drilling, they'll eventually pop free. And then we also took off the sway bar as the kit does not utilize that. And uh, now we're gonna start bolting on the lower links. Now that we're installing the first link, this is the lower rear link. And it really doesn't matter on this car which link you put on first. Um, it, it really, uh, you can get to everything pretty easily. Um, just so that everything is matching, we're gonna face the O-ring misalignment towards the front of the car. We're gonna place a little bit of Loctite on the bolt. Moving on to the lower front link, have the O-ring on the misalignment facing forward again. Put a little bit of blue Loctite on the bolt. So next thing we're gonna do is uh, install the trunnion. Uh, the trunnion keeps the arm from rotating since the shock is offset on the arm. We're gonna thread the trunnion through the uniball on the rear link. There's a misalignment built into it. All right, we put the misalignment on the other side. And we'll put the nut on. We can just leave this loose so it's a little bit easier for us to get this onto the spindle. We're gonna do the upper rear link. And you can see on one end, the uniball is offset to one side. So we wanna make sure that we put it in this position in here. If you have any questions on it, you can refer to the diagram that we'll include. I put the last link on, and this is the upper front link. Cool. And that's all the links. The tie rod length has changed. We kept the upper portion alone, but we have an adapter that we give you for the to make it the correct length. It's a left-hand thread. And we're just gonna leave it loose, but we do have a pinch bolt that goes in here so that it does not come loose or back off when you're in motion. So we removed the hub from the factory spindle and we're gonna place it on the new one. We have new bolts. If you use the factory ones, you need to trim them down, but we supply a new bolt. Um, we're gonna use the factory washer we're going to put some blue Loctite on it. We 
we have all the links on and we tied them down since the uniballs are new. They're pretty stiff, they will break in, but it actually helps us get this spindle on. Um, holds everything where we, where we want it. And uh, we have misalignments. We're gonna put the misalignment into here and then we're gonna put the spindle on and we're gonna work one uniball at a time. So we're gonna start with the bottom actually. It's a lot easier with a hand. Okay. We're gonna put the bolt facing down. Once we have the lower bolt on, we're now going to install the axle back in, make sure the clip is on the axle so it stays inside of the differential. Okay, and then this will help too. We're going to use a friend to put this on. All right, so we have our steering adapter that we provide that screws on here. And then we um, also screwed on our three quarter inch heim and the misalignments with a half inch hole in it. And we're just gonna put this into the spindle. And place the bolt in. Once we have the steering in, and all the bolts are in their place. We're next gonna put on the rotor. I'm just putting these on to make it easier for us to put the brake calipers on in place. Just gonna snug them up with my fingers just to hold it down. And then we're gonna bolt the, uh, the caliper on. Well, we're going to use this 1032 bolt and we're going to fasten it in there. Now just so you know, I actually stole this clamp. It was originally further up the line. I took it off and took the rubber grommet on it and I wrapped it around the rubber grommet down here and it works perfectly. And we're going to fasten it. This is going to keep the brake line from getting into the wheel. And then we're going to tie the brake line along this rear upper leg. In order to make this shock work with the kit, we provide you with a clevis um, that goes around the axle. This clevis is made out of 70-75 aluminum and along with this adapter, 
So the reason why this is a two-piece is so that you can slip the springs over it, put your coil retainer on, and then you can put this on after because the, this will not fit on the inside of the spring. To remove this, the factory eyelet, you just need to heat up the end clevis with a map gas or propane torch. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna heat up the Loctite. And you need to clamp the shaft with some sort of aluminum block. Um, there's a couple companies that make them and uh, one in particular AGM makes a, a shaft clamp that you can put in the vise and it holds the shaft without marring it up. And then you can put an adjustable wrench or anything you want on the factory clevis and just take a hammer when it's hot and knock it and it'll break free and you can screw it off. Then we make sure we put red Loctite on this and tighten it back down. So let's go ahead and put the spring back on. So we got the spring on and we use the factory retainer. It's important that if you have an aftermarket one, it needs to sit the same way as the factory one. The top of our clevis is designed to fit with the factory coil retainer. And when people upgrade them, uh, there's some out there that will change this. So, you know, last resort, make sure you're using the factory coil retainer and you won't have any problems. So from the factory, these cars do something different that you don't normally see. When the suspension is drooped all the way out, you'll notice the tops of the tires are tilted and the camber is going outward. Now, what the reason why they're doing that is so that at full droop, the CV angle is really high. When they tilt it up, they're pointing the CV up at the differential to reduce the angle. Now, this kit corrects that and corrects the camber curve, so at droop, you don't have that happening. Therefore, it's tilting the wheels inward. And what that does is it increases the CV angle. So to combat that, we've lifted the kit up so that at full droop, we are not experiencing that situation with the high CV angle. Now, in order to achieve that, the easiest route is to put a limit strap on after you install the kit so that nothing is binding and it's all held up where it needs to be. And then the second option is, is we will sell a spacer to you that will go inside the shock if you let us know what shock you have and it'll limit the shock and you'd have to take the shock apart and put the spacer inside of it. So you have two options here and if you have any questions, feel free to call us. Okay, so we're gonna put the misalignments into this unit ball where the shock gets mounted to. We're gonna put one on each side, they're the same. And then we have this Delrin donut that's gonna keep the shock from twisting. We're gonna place that on the inside. And we're gonna slip the shock in. Okay, so we finished the install. We got the shock in, we tightened all the bolts and uh, we got the steering roughly in line for the rear. We're gonna get the alignment right um, once we actually get it on the ground. And uh, yeah, we're ready to go and we're excited to go drive this thing. So this wraps up the Pro-R Turbo-R installation for the X-Travel kit. If uh, you have any questions, uh, please leave some comments below and don't forget to subscribe to our page and uh, we'll see you next time.